Hello and welcome back to Chilled Art. Today we're going to do some limited palette paintings which are a great way to teach yourself more about how colour works and to just uh, give yourself an excuse to paint something quickly without worrying about getting it too nice and neat. So uh, a while back I did uh, a limited palette thing just for fun on DeviantArt and I let people suggest characters and colour palettes. So I've got uh, Commander Shepard from uh, Mass Effect here. Fem Shep, of course. Why would you Why would you ever play Man Shep, really? Of course, it's not Shepard Shepard from my Let's Play. It's like default Fem Shep. Uh, so that one was done. Each of these is done with a palette of five colours. So this one was... Uh, you might recognise the colour scheme as being the colour from uh, Obama's uh, campaign poster, the famous Hope one. So that one was that one was nice. Got uh, one of Aradia from Homestuck here, uh, which had this really nice um, like yellow, orange, and red contrasted against this sort of greyish teal colour. Uh, got one of uh, Rocket from Fandango, which uh, this one was done really quickly. It's quite messy, but uh, was like with this creamy colour and. Uh, that, that one was a really interesting colour scheme to work with, actually. What else have I got? Got a Kanaya, because there's got to be a Kanaya. I mean, really, it's, you cannot hope to beat Kanaya Mariam in a snark-off. She is simply the best there is. Um, so yeah, that, that this one's a really simple one, and I think it might only use... No, one, two, three, four, five... Yeah, it's five colours, but that one was using a pretty straightforward colour ramp. It's quite simple compared to the others. Uh, I've got one of uh, Loke. Locke. I think it's Locke. I think he's named after, like, the philosopher Locke. Um, and we have, like, this... Uh, this one was really interesting because it was such an unusual set of colours. You had this really dark, just off black, and you had this uh, this brown, red brown. You had a red. Uh, you had this uh, white colour, but it's not quite white. It's like a very light grey blue, and you had uh, this kind of bluish grey and so uh, that led to a really interesting picture that I'm actually quite happy with that one I think it looks really atmospheric and uh, I, when I saw the colour scheme I was like oh man I want it to be like the opening of Final Fantasy 6 like the snow and that that music and that fantastic mood it has uh, and finally this is one that wasn't part of the challenge I spent a bit more time on this one so it's a bit neater it's one of uh, Rose from Homestuck kind of floating and uh, so there's there's a bit more oh is that 200% huh I think I shrank this down after painting it the lines seem very delicate uh, so yeah it's got this um, so this one had like a pink a pink colour and then a lighter pink that's almost like an orangey shade. It has this hue ramp going up from this pink through orange to a very light kind of yellow and then it's got this dark colour as well, this dark purple colour that uh, I used for the uh, for the dress. Um, so firstly I should show you set of palettes. This is one I found on DeviantArt uh, and the person has kindly on the description said that you can freely use them. Uh, copyright on colour palettes is a bit of a muddy issue uh, so look out for what the person has said about them. Some people say you can't copyright a set of colours, some people say you can copyright a set of colours. I think from what I've heard, so long as you're not trying to redistribute them as a palette that you've created, if you're just using them to do a painting, they can't say, oh, you used my palette for that painting, so I have copyright of your painting. That's that's not how it works. Um, but anyway, this is uh, Take Bao Xo Xo. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce that. With a set of palettes that I think are pretty good. Um, but only some of these are ideal for 
painting so I'm gonna start by uh, getting rid of ones uh, showing you like which ones are good for this kind of thing and which ones are less suited uh, so firstly we are dealing with just ones of five colors so ooh, I had the rubber selected not the uh, the eraser rather I heard that rubber in America is slang for a condom uh, so we don't want ones that have more than five colors uh, because the these would be great for like the color scheme of a game or something but it's too many colors it removes the whole point of limiting ourselves we also don't want these ones that have like three um, so they're no good for us we don't we don't want those. They're either too limited or not limited enough. Uh, we also don't want ones like this, which are just a straight hue ramp. Um, it's not that you can't do a good digital painting with them, as you saw with that Kanaya. It's just that they won't do a very interesting painting. You won't have a lot, sort of, you certainly don't want one like this. The, the colours have too little variation between them. Uh, we also don't want ones like this or like this. They're just a bunch of random colours. There's no ramp at all. You need one that has some ramping, but which has like some contrast as well. Uh, so this one's a nice one. Uh, what else have we got? This one's quite nice. Uh, this one's lovely. Um, let's see, not that one. Uh, this one's quite good. Not that one. Uh, what else have we got? I would suggest ones like they should have a bit of a ramp and some kind of a contrast colour, which might also have a small ramp itself. Oh, holy shit. What the fuck, Windows? Uh, fine, go to basic mode. God, right. Sorry about that. It it decided that running all this at the same time was too much for its little self, and uh, you've got too many colours. You've, bleh. um, that's nice. So where was I? Yeah. Oh, that's the one I did that rose with. So we definitely like that one. That's too random. Um, so you want one that's got some sort of a ramp, some sort of a contrasting colour. Uh, and preferably some that are uh, warm colours and some that are cool colours in the mix. This one's lovely with this, like, like lovely warm shades. Doesn't have a lot in the way of cool colours, but it's got a nice range of light and dark. So, yeah, it's... Uh, no, 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 uh, no. This one's cool. It's really nice. Uh, no, yes. So you you start looking at the ones that you feel like, oh yeah, that, that's got real kind of potential to be a nice colour scheme for painting with. Uh, like some of them with just four colours are nice, like you could work with this one. It's got a ramp and it's got a contrast colour. Your contrast colour can be either light or dark, it could be... Um, cool or warm doesn't matter it's just about sort of what works for a particular piece and when you look at a, a palette you might already start having ideas about which character you think that would suit like uh, this one over here is nice and I might think oh yeah that looks like it would be good for Pearl from Steven Universe because it's got like this bluish colour and it's got like a pale sort of like just an off-white and it's got some warm colours as well it's got like that pink and blue scheme that we'd associate with Pearl from Steven Universe and like I, I saw this and was like oh that would work for like Rose's kind of grim dark outfit with the pink and the dark colours and it's kind of purple and it's got a light colour for her hair and it's got pinks in it which is kind of a Lalonde colour or I might look at this one and go, oh yeah, Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. So you, you look at these colours and you start thinking in terms of who would that suit, uh, what should I do with that. Of course today, because I'm doing a monetized video, I'm going to work with um, 
probably public domain characters. <laughs> so don't don't get any take and take down orders. Uh, so I'm gonna do my usual thing. I'm gonna make an A4. Yeah, like that. And I'm going to just crop it down a bit because that's a big area to work with. Boom, that'll do nicely. And what I usually do when I'm going to pick is I just select the palette like that. And I'll just drag it in like this. Woohoo, it's tiny. It is tiny. Let's scale it up a bit. Boom, right. Okay, so I'm going to put those away for now. Uh, so usually what I do is I pick the middle colour as a background. Right. I'm going to make a new layer to do my drawing on. Uh, so I'm going to go with maybe somebody like King Arthur. That might be nice. Somebody with a nice kind of flowing cloak. And like there's kind of a sunset theme going on here so let's let's go with that uh, so first thing I do is I, I'll pick one that's uh, darker than the color I've picked as my um, as like I've got I've got like the what I'm calling the base color as that uh, as as the mid-tone uh, the one that's like the, the most kind of medium in kind of tone and not too not too strong a colour. Right. Let's do this. Start uh, blocking in the shape of the physique. Tim uh, <laughs> swagger pose. Uh, You could put a, put a hand on a sword like that. You know what's interesting about King Arthur that people often don't know is that Excalibur wasn't the sword he pulled from the stone. Like, um, like people get the swords mixed up because Arthur pulled this sword from a stone and that's why he was king, um, which is a, an odd way to pick your monarch but I guess it's no more odd than like oh your, your parent was really good at ruling the country so now you can rule the country because we're sure you'll also be good at it because of who your parent was which is a bit like making me a maths teacher because my dad's a maths teacher well he teaches programming more um, I, I can't program either by the way I did, uh, I did um, A level computing, and I was I was terrible at it. So there you go. Just because somebody's parent is good at something, doesn't mean that they are also good at something. So really, like having having somebody pull a sword from a stone is pretty much picking a person at random and. It's practically the same as choosing somebody whose parents were good at something. I'm gonna do a proper Arthur who like is dressed in kind of Celtic type things rather than your medieval Arthur. But that said, I mean Arthur is he he kind of lives in a time of fantasy really. It's like people are always like, Oh, who's the real King Arthur? and it's sort of like whoever they were if there ever was a real King Arthur they probably fulfilled absolutely none of these legends so it doesn't really matter um, but like there's a, there's a high chance if there ever actually was a, a King Arthur or an Uther Pendragon they might well have been Cumbrian like me which is about the reason I'm like yeah King Arthur, King Arthur's cool, he's my homeboy um, right, and uh, since since he's a Cumbrian, there need to be some mountains in the background. Yeah, yeah, mountains, and maybe we'll have a sunset back here. Like the sun's coming down, and he's got like a cool winged helmet, which 
is probably the Celt Snipple Ball, but really he's fictional, so who cares? And he's got some shoes on. Right. Uh, so I can't spend like loads of time on this because time is of the essence. Um, so now you've seen me painting and normally I do, normally at this stage I would pick a different layer to start doing uh, the thing on. With this kind of painting, with these speed paints using a limited palette, I don't do that. I just go straight onto things um, and start uh, start doing the, the colour straight away and things. There we go. It's going to have like a... makes sense to do like an older King Arthur, um, especially with the, the sunset theme. It's kind of like... Uh, it was King Arthur, oh yeah, I was talking about his sword and then I got off track. So King Arthur, the sword he pulled out of the stone was not Excalibur. It was a different sword um, and then he was given Excalibur uh, by the Lady in the Lake, uh, who is literally a lady who lives in a lake and gave him a sword. Uh, and that, and like the sword uh, Excalibur is like this cool, powerful sword. But the really important part is the sheet is the um, scabbard of the sword, which I haven't painted in, even though it's the most important part of the thing. Uh, I think that I think it was called Ascalon, but I might be wrong. Uh, uh, Ascalon rings a bell though, but the scabbard, as long as he was carrying the scabbard, you couldn't kill him. And in the end, he was, uh, he, he gets killed because he's not carrying the scabbard like a noob. Um, like, why would you ever not be carry? why would you not carry it? It's like, oh yeah, if you don't carry this thing, you'll die. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> Why are, why are fairy tales full of people who can't remember, like, really basic important information or who, like, forget to do really, really key important things? It's, uh, always used to annoy, uh, like, baby Kate, because it's like, uh, I, I remember, like, the, the, um, the fairy story that always annoyed me the most was uh, the magic porridge pot. I don't know, uh, whenever I talk about this fairy tale people are like, what? I have never heard of this. But it's a fairy tale about a young lady who's very poor and doesn't know how she's going to get by and feed herself and stuff and then she gets a magic porridge pot and the magic porridge pot, if you say cook little pot cook, it will keep producing porridge, like hot tasty porridge, until you say stop little pot stop. Which is like, wow, who, who wouldn't want one of those? That's great. It's like a magical porridge thing. I guess for me it would only be useful if you could tell it cooked soy porridge little pot. Cause because I, I, I'm allergic to milk, kind of, and I guess porridge with water sounds horrible. I hear that some people in like Scotland have their porridge with water, and I'm just like, bleh. Um, but, but like, the thing is that what happens in that story is that at some point, depending on the version, it's either she says cook little pot cook, and then she goes out and uh like comes back and it's porridge just all over the house the house is full of porridge and she cannot remember <laughs> this deactivation word which is stop little pot stop <laughs> like it's it's barely a step up from xbox off like <laughs> i really hope you don't have an xbox in your room and i just deactivated it uh sorry if that's what I just did. I hope you're not watching this on an Xbox. Um, shit. Uh, anyway, people who are still with us because they're not watching on an Xbox. Um, 
so yeah it, it it was like this is this is a grown woman and she can't remember something she can't remember to say stop little pot stop that is just how how is how is she alive how uh she really really used to get on my nerves like <laughs> I I was a very fussy child and uh yeah. Alright. Locking out this colour in here. I might make the leggings Yeah, I think uh I think I know what I'm gonna do. Like one of the things about working with limited palette is you need to really think about how you're going to uh block out what's light and what's dark which is one of the things that is a good reason to do it it's like you you have to start thinking like oh okay how am i going to make this stand out from here because you can't just rely on it being a different hue you only have a limited uh a limited set of colors to work with so you have to start being quite uh quite careful with them do this for some and these. So this is going to have to be quite sort of quickly done and not too neat because otherwise I won't have time to try any of the other palettes or anything. So I can't be uh, too much of a perfectionist with this. Let's have these metal so we're gonna have some strong highlights and uh like shadows on them because that's one of the things about metals they uh they have strong highlights contrasted against uh strong like dark patches um that's how you make them look metallic because uh metal tends to reflect reflect the light more uh more directly than what we would call a diffuse material which diffuses the light coming off it or like reflects uh, and also tends to like reflect certain colours more strongly and things. You do get coloured metals of course like say gold. Alright, so let's uh in this start to uh, get this strongly blocked out look um, in a lot of ways this is kind of a flatting process why do I always record these in the morning when I have no voice have I got any tea left yes ah that is <clears throat> cold tea not because I intend it to be cold but because it has gone cold <laughs> while I've been doing this <laughs> of course I always think that cold tea is the taste of getting things done you know you're getting things done when your tea has gone cold let's use a bigger brush for this go 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 Now I'm not using the basic Photoshop brushes this time, I'm using a different set which I use quite often and I will link to, um, I can't remember which ones these are called, I don't know, um, I'll remember at the end of the episode and <laughs> put a link in the description because uh, they're similar to the basic brushes, it's just a little uh, nuance to them. That uh, I find quite uh, useful because this this is a really nice one for just like basic kind of blending and stuff. So one of the uh, one of the skills you uh, get to when you're doing these is uh, like blending the colours to get other colours that are in the middle, and this isn't cheating by the way because this is how you would work if you had a limited palette and you were working in like traditional media like uh, 
by traditional media I mean uh, like ones that you do on paper or canvas or whatever so when we talk about traditional media it's usually in opposition to digital media which uh, so digital media is working on a computer with whatever programs or yeah computer tablet anything like that's digital media and then traditional media are things like paints and pencils and all that kind of stuff uh, you can certainly do things like this with traditional media by the way uh, and like the idea of using a limited palette certainly has been done for many years before we started making things with computers and the like uh, the nice thing about working with computers is I can make uh, videos like this and uh, do like rambling about old fairy tales that I used to hate as a kid while I draw <laughs> really useful things that teach you many things about art Let's paint in some folds and things sort of starting to take shape a bit now oh great somebody's using a blender upstairs <laughs> uh, I guess it is kind of waking up time for a lot of people uh, personally I've been awake for a while um, even now I've finished like the big contract I was on that was like a six week thing I still get up when Shaz gets up to go to work so it's like um, it doesn't really change um, change that much for waking up time which is okay by me because uh, because I'm kind of I'm actually a morning person um, not so much a nighttime person which is something that is uh, great for um, it's great for work but it's terrible for socializing so everyone thinks you're a party pooper if you're the person who like likes to go to bed early <laughs> But it's, it's just when I feel at my most energetic, it's like morning and daytime rather than some people are like super, like super up for everything in the evening and just feel totally out of it during, uh, during the day or uh, during the morning particularly, like my brother's like that, he just, he's just like <laughs> during the morning like um, and he needs to like get himself fired up if he's gonna do things in the morning with like some energetic music and stuff and uh, yeah it's uh it's just how some people are like and it, it sucks that like people put more value on certain like sleeping times it's just whatever your body needs is and really it kind of sucks for people who are uh, not morning people for like work because they're forced to like get themselves up when their body really doesn't want to and they have to set all these alarms to get themselves up and like they're not working when they feel at their best um, which is why a lot of uh, freelancers I know work really odd times like they work through the night and uh, then sleep in till about kind of 11 so or sometimes later depends on the person really Ooh, this is coming on nicely You notice that I uh, picked up a colour that was kind of in between the two, uh, which is a useful way to go about things when you're trying to just uh, get your colours to blend nicely. I 
this is what this uh, this brush excels for is um, blending colors in a really pleasant way this is the brush set I used for that uh, that rose image the floating rose because you get this lovely blending the blending is uh, a lot of kind of the the um, the trick to making a digital painting look good is all in kind of how you blend because uh, it, it's that balance between too much opacity which makes it look like it lacks confidence and indistinct and fuzzy compared to too 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 solid and it looks like really kind of flat and kind of cut outy. Wow, they are really blending it upstairs, going for it, and making it happen. Right, should get those mountains in the background here actually, because uh, you can't be in Cumbria without mountains. It's, in fact, if there aren't any mountains, you might not be in Cumbria at all. So uh, that's too pointy to be a Cumbrian mountain. They're more like crinkly yeah that because I wanted to be really accurate I could look up an actual like set of Cumbria mountains but I can't be bothered because nobody would notice other than my dad <laughs> maybe <laughs> my dad would be like oh look there's coast an old man and oh there's uh there's uh Weatherlum. crinkle crags Actually, it, one of the things, like, I'm glad that London has buildings everywhere because I always find it disconcerting if I'm in, like, a non-built-up area down south that there aren't mountains everywhere. feels kind of agoraphobic. Like, it's like, oh god, the, there's, there's nothing hemming in the skyline. The, the, this, there's too much space. I feel kind of... I don't know, exposed, I guess. It feels strange, uh, disconcerting having just this wide open sky and nothing kind of, there's nothing between you and it. Let's put that in there, get this looking nice and shiny. Uh, these little van braces, I guess. Give him a very simple like, buckle. There we go. It's coming along pretty nicely. Uh, one of the things about digital painting and doing a full body that uh, people don't often discuss is the closer you get to the head, <laughs> the more detail you should put in, and the further you get from the head, the less people notice that it's like really sketchy. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, it's an interesting thing. People naturally tend to focus on the face when they see an image uh, and so you can you can get away with a lot of like just hinting at details elsewhere on an image Oops. if you've painted this all on the same layer instead of using the rubber tool to rub out details like i just did you could just use that shade of orange and paint it's, uh... All right, so this is our first area where we're going to have to do some tricks to differentiate where those mountains end and where his legs begin, but it'll be fairly simple. We could use the fill, fill tool here, but the Photoshop fill tool is a bastard that... I'll just show you what it'll do. It... Because uh, uh, the fill tool has, like... it. Uh, that's okay we can use that it uh, it's not very good at like feathering itself intelligently uh, so you'll usually need to clean it up a bit afterwards because uh, people assume that since the fill tool is a tool and it's one we use a lot that 
you can just use it and leave and it's just like no the fill tool is it's not intelligent it it can't uh it can't guess what'll look good so you have to touch it up afterwards and uh make make it look good uh you can't just use straight fill tool it's a it's a common error i see with uh, beginners coloring things is uh they just use the fill tool straight up and then they get this horrible kind of line around everything. <laughs> I'm going to take that and give them a nice shadow. We're going to use this. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Now, here's a fun trick for uh, making shadows look good. Uh, let's do that. Along the edge of a shadow, uh, add an area where it's a bit more, um, like a more saturated colour. Right. Put that in. Whoops. Where did that do that? No. No. You know what's really annoying about Photoshop? Unlike most programs where if you press undo repeatedly it keeps undoing things. Whoa, debut, go back there. If Photoshop doesn't do that, Photoshop's like, uh, oh, you want to undo the undo. It's like, no, I don't want to undo the undo. I just want to un keep undoing more steps. Please stop. <laughs> Whereas like something like, say, Manga Studio, which I'll probably do, uh, it's been renamed Clip Studio now, but um, I might well do something about like Manga Studio or Clip Studio later. That said, I'm not, I don't have the latest version of it, so um, I don't know how much the new version has changed. Uh, I know they're trying to get it sort of thought of as a more general art program ra rather than one that's like aimed at making comics. Uh, it always used to be like a, a comic making program uh, and a really good one actually Manga Studio or as it's now Clip Studio it has much better line smoothing than uh, Photoshop does. You don't have to use Lazy Nesme with it like uh, Photoshop, if you want like nice quality lines, it's quite hard to get them if you don't use the Lazy Nesme plugin, which is not an official thing or anything. Um, so, yeah, Manga Studio, uh, I love using Manga Studio for line art. It's, uh, right, I'm gonna put a bit of a highlight down here, and this there. So, I might put in a bit. Shadow on that sword. Actually, I can use the yellow for this to stop it from getting too mixed up. I'm going to put an edge highlight on without going too. Yeah, this is probably getting to about as much time as I can spend on a single piece before I have to move on. Um, here we go. But yeah, uh, I can't remember what I was talking about and why I brought up Manga Studio. <laughs> I think I've mentioned before that uh, edge highlights are a great like quick way to add a little bit of zing to a uh, to a digital painting. Like just kind of touch things up and add a bit and something nice to them. Uh, now for the background, I might use the background a bit to just uh, paint in. Of these clouds in the background so that they're not gonna 
slight overlap over things I've already done. Yeah, that looks good. It helps his face pop a bit. Uh, yeah. King of the... King of the Britons. Uh, uh, King Arthur, like, it, it is worth reading some of the... Uh, some of the myths about him, because they're quite interesting. Uh, oops. Grab some of that. And we'll put the bit in here. This is always a thing I do. I say, oh yeah, I think I'm going to call that finish and then I do a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> it's like... It's, it, it's quite... It's always difficult with these videos because, like, because I'm on this limited time and it's it's kind of like... If, if I was doing something like just for myself I could just be like I'd know when I felt like it was done I wouldn't have this limit on kind of no you have to finish it now like but really it's a good habit to get into being able to finish uh, and do things quickly and just leave it because uh, firstly it'll stop you from overworking a thing which can often lead to something looking kind of crap um, and secondly, it'll it'll make you get faster, um, and you should. It's really a good idea to concentrate on getting fast at drawing before you concentrate on getting good at drawing, uh, which seems counterintuitive. But if you're fast at drawing, you can draw more, which means you can fail faster. You can like make mistakes and then quickly uh, try again rather than kind of uh, spending ages and ages and ages on a piece that isn't any good and then you feel exhausted and like you don't have the energy to try again quickly or trying again will take you hours uh, so yeah uh, learning to draw quickly or paint quickly so that you can make mistakes and then try again quickly is generally a really good idea so yeah so with that in mind we're gonna leave this one so there's King Arthur uh, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just minimise him for now. Uh, so let's make a new one. Uh, A4. Hmm. Hmm. No, King Arthur, you go back there. I'm gonna get the pallets. Alright. So let's crop this down. Something like that. Yeah, that'll do. And what we got. No, I don't want to crop it. Go away, crop tool. Leave. Be gone. Where's my select tool? There it is. Okay, let's see what colours have we got. What we got, what we got. Let's go for one that's got like a contrast to it between warm and cool because that one didn't really. It was a pretty straight uh, ramp that just kind of went... It was a, It's a ramp but it's got a lot of variation. Uh, this one's interesting. Hmm. I quite like that one. Uh, hmm. That one's nice as well. It's not much of a ramp. This one's really interesting. Uh, that one's cool. That one's quite cool with like the grey. That one's rubbish. Uh, that one's nice as well. Oh, picking colours is hard. Um, that one's really interesting with that sudden like bright orange in the middle. That would be... Uh, but I want one that's got like a contrast I think between cool and hot and maybe like uh, two different colour ramps or something, so... Hmm... That one is very interesting and has a really interesting kind of ramp going on, so let's take this one. This is one that I would almost certainly, if I was using it to like, <laughs> to paint like fan art, I feel like this would be a car cat, like... <laughs> It's like Car Cat from Homestuck because it's got uh, it's got a really nice uh, orangey yellow for the horns, and it's got lots of grey tones in it. 
but we are drawing uh, public domain characters today. So, uh, or public domain or like original and things. Uh, so I'm gonna, hmm, no, I'm gonna use this gray as my neutral. Yeah. Oh, it's actually a, like a green. That's really interesting. Uh, so I might do sort of like a, hmm, could do like a kind of a sci-fi thing or, yeah, I like sci-fi things. Let's just start doodling and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to take that dark color to start doodling. Uh, maybe a space knight lady, yeah, okay, who is in space. All right. And she, she's floating around in space, yeah, that'd be perfect. Alright. Alright. So, uh, when I'm building poses, I tend to uh, try to keep things loose um, as much as possible because I find that uh, you get more of kind of the gesture and the movement in place when you do that. Uh, so you can learn more than just like palettes in these videos. Uh, just because previous ones have always kind of drawn things in advance rather than... Uh, although I think I didn't last time with the, uh, with the, the painting one, but yeah, so I might like, this is a kind of curvy lady, it's, which is kind of cool, like, yeah, and let's see, maybe she's got like a, a ray gun, yeah, ray guns, ray guns are cool, like, and it's got to have fins on it. <laughs> like this is a rule of ray guns. <laughs> They've got to have fins on. The, the ray guns in Fandango also had <laughs> fins on. <laughs> and when you're in space, everybody has to have like shoulder pad things. <laughs> like it's a rule of space. Like if you're in space and you don't have like pointy shoulder pad things, you got to ask yourself, what am I doing in space? <laughs> like really. You went to space and you didn't take the like take the opportunity to have like glowy shoulder pads. It's like what are you doing with your life? Right, this is gonna be a slightly tricky angle. Uh but she should have a non uh non copyright infringing laser sword. <laughs> That's a really interesting thing that like uh lightsabers are like it's it's the idea that kinda of lightsabers are copyright but you can't copyright like a sword made of light or a laser sword. Um like I always liked uh, the Sword of Light in uh, in Slayers. Do you remember the anime Slayers? That was a great anime. Um, like, it's it's like a kind of fantasy comedy, um, and like it's really interesting Slayers because it's it starts off and it's like it's an obvious comedy. It's like it's it's a comedy anime about like this this girl who's a sorceress and she's like ridiculously overpowered and she's got like this idiot swordsman who happens to be carrying this like legendary sword um and uh but then the plot lines of each season are incredibly serious with high stakes um and apparently it it was originally a Dungeons and Dragons comic, uh, like that ran in like the Japanese version of Dragon Magazine or something. Uh, 
and you can really tell that it was originally Dungeons and Dragons um, because like you can tell like the spells are like D and D spells that have just kind of been renamed and things like I mean Fireball is still even called Fireball um, and like the, the the characters have obvious D and D classes. It's like, oh well, Amelia is obviously a cleric or a paladin, and Lena is clearly like a, a D and D wizard. Uh, although in the new rules, I feel like she'd be a sorceress because she's got very few very powerful spells, and like that she just casts over and over again, and sort of. She she just feels like she'd be she'd be a, a high level D and D sorceress, um, and like yeah, I really highly recommend Slayers um, because it's really they have like these serious plot lines that are treated in quite a silly way, um, and in the middle of each season they have a few episodes where they just do silly episodes. It's just like, right, we're in the middle of the season, here's a few silly filler episodes, and now back to the plot. Um, and uh, yeah, and I feel like Lena Inverse as a character, Lena Inverse being the main character in that, is um, really interesting in that uh, she's kind of, she's not a very typical um, she's not your typical kind of anime heroine of the time or in general she's she's not considered super attractive um, and she's she's sort of she's moody and capricious and generally not very well liked and not very nice as a person but kind of ends up doing the right thing because she kind of feels like she has to um i guess this lady's bald and wearing a cool space helmet okay um i i'm down with this sometimes drawings just happen <laughs> but yeah slayers is uh is an anime that i love and it's one of those things where it's like i've always thought about cosplaying lena inverse and i've never actually got around to it but uh, maybe sometime I will. I don't know. I kind of really want to cosplay Pearl from Steven Universe. I feel like Pearl and I have a lot in common. <laughs> um, it's quite funny actually. I've seen people doing like uh, fan art that's like a Pearl Kanaya crossover, and it's like yeah, they're they're quite similar characters really, and uh, I strongly relate to both of them. People who don't like follow Homestuck and stuff are probably wondering why I keep mentioning Kanaya. Somebody had actually left a comment on last episode that I couldn't reply to because they posted it on I don't know, sometimes I can't sometimes you can't reply to stuff on YouTube and I don't know if it's because it's posted from a mobile device or what, but somebody was like, You sound like Kanaya <laughs> It's like yes. It's because I voiced Kanaya in Let's Read Homestuck. <laughs> that must be really surreal for that person. Like, they, they came across these videos without having any clue of that and just went, why does this random artist <laughs> sound like this alien girl from this thing I watch elsewhere on YouTube? Although I remember looking up an animation tutorial without realising it was by um, Ross from Game Grumps before he was on Game Grumps. It was like, like this, this Australian guy sounds just like Ross from Game Grumps. I love Game Grumps, it's great. I was never really a fan until uh, Danny was on it, which is quite funny because some people are like... Some people are like super no, it was better when John Tron was on it. I I'm really more I'm a hardcore Danny Danny all the way. Danny is my uh I really like Danny as a grump, but I don't think I I feel like it's always better when it's that combination of Danny and Aaron because uh they they have these just different temperaments that just perfectly work with each other they just they they just complement each other so nicely with uh 
Danny being just so chill and Aaron being just so like animated and uh, passionate and to me it's like that's it's just a perfect combination of two people um, is uh, Danny and Aaron in Game Grumps okay let's let's do this the skin's going to be interesting uh, because we don't have a uh, we don't have a skin tone, but that's what uh, doing this kind of thing is all about. It's about finding ways around uh, around problems like this. I'm gonna put a really nice highlight onto that uh, and start. This put a highlight onto the head as well. I mean, we could just say she's a like I don't know. Could say she's a grey skin space babe, or we could uh, decide that uh, I don't know. There are all sorts of excuses you can make for that kind of thing. I think I'm going to use the darker colour actually. Uh, the background. There are two ways I could do this. I could uh, fill in her uh, or I could do it this way. So, oops, I don't need that. Uh, that's your, that's the um, brush uh, properties which you can edit and uh, do stuff with. It's, it's just leave me a bit of leeway to remember where those outlines are so I can put some edge highlights and uh, make the shape of the body stand out from this uh, vacuum of space. Space is awesome. There we go. Doesn't matter too much about overlapping that sword because it's gonna gonna like lightsaber it up. I mean non copyright laser sword it up. Yep. <laughs> it's definitely not a lightsaber, it's a non copyright laser sword. Uh, generic brand laser sword. Brand X. It's, uh, people will be running taste tests and all the like. Think, uh, how does how does the official brand compare to this other brand that costs like half the price? Oh, the more expensive one tastes better. Although that can be misleading actually because like there was that whole like new coke thing where they where Pepsi were doing the Pepsi challenge which was they would get like people members of the public to taste uh Pepsi and uh and coke uh with a blindfold and say which one they liked the taste of better and uh of course people kept saying oh that that one's better I like that one and then they'd remove it and it'd be like oh it's Pepsi huh I always drink coke I'm really surprised maybe I'll drink Pepsi in future um, and like this was a massive deal in like I think it was the early 90s and it even caused coke uh, coke to panic and because uh, their sales were slipping they were losing sales to Pepsi and they made like new coke which had a sweeter taste more like Pepsi. The problem is that the reason Pepsi wins uh, taste challenges like blindfolded ones is that they just used like a tiny cup it's just like you just would have like a little sip of it and when it's just a tiny sip people do like the taste of Pepsi better because it's sweeter than Coke uh, but if you've got to like 
drink an entire thing of it. Uh, most people, um, particularly like older people, will end up preferring the taste of Coke because it's not as sweet, um, and like you you can stand to drink it for longer. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, I'm pretty sure Game Grumps talked about that a little while back, actually. But yeah, they did. Coca-Cola were really in a panic about it, and they released new Coke, which had a new taste, and it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> but some people think it was all a ploy because then they brought back regular Coke, which had a huge uh, sales boost, and the regular Coke. It was like, oh, regular Coke, but Coke's back, hooray! And everybody. Uh, Everybody bought it. Um, it was like, oh, thank God, new Coke's back. I'm gonna buy a new Coke. And uh, since that time, uh, Pepsi has never really challenged uh, Coke again. Uh, it's never been a serious contender against uh, against Coke. So yeah, that's it's it's really interesting how. Um, how that played out and think about whether that was an intentional like outcome uh, to me it seems a bit of a Xanatos gambit to assume that coke actually planned it that way it seems I feel like there are too many factors uh, it's like a lot of conspiracy theories they involve a lot of uh, factors going just the right way to be successful and it would be hard to um, it'd be hard to make sure that it went the right way for you and so I'm kind of like uh, I don't know I'm not sure you could realistically guarantee that uh, it was going to have the intended effect there um, it seems a bit of a risky marketing strategy to sort of deliberately create a terrible product and hope that people were so glad that the original was back that they would buy it. <laughs> to me, I'm kind of, I'm skeptical of that. It's kind of like, hmm, not sure that would uh, be very likely to be deliberately used as a as a strategy um, by people who uh, are kind of trying to keep a, a company afloat it's, it seems uh, seems a bit I don't know a bit of a weird way of going about things I guess I feel like I don't know. There'll no doubt be somebody in the comments who's like, no, it really was a conspiracy because you see this person. This pink is lovely. I really like this uh, really like fluorescent kind of pink. It looks amazing. It always makes me think of kind of uh, like the the nineties and like late eighties, early nineties kind of color. Because um, fluorescent was like we were really excited about things that were fluorescent in the in the 90s it was uh, i certainly was i love to this day i still love things that are fluorescent i just uh find them sort of really zingy and exciting and fun it's just the kind of person i am i i, I like i really like bright colors and uh I find uh, bright colours like really, really fun and exciting, and just you know make me want to get up and go. 
I can't spend too much longer on this, can I? <laughs> Let's just put a bit of detail in the face because as mentioned earlier, whoa, okay, <laughs> it's a little too close. Um, you can see how blobby and uh, like messy this is when you get in close, uh, which is fine as long as it looks good at the uh, intended viewing distance. It's like nobody's gonna notice or care. I like the idea of having her bald. I think it's uh, interesting. It makes sense if you're wearing a spacesuit all the time as well, I think. There. The nice thing about doing these kinds of uh, challenges where you've got a limited time limit and a limited uh, palette and things is that it stops you from just fussing over every detail being like super neat and super right and uh, it just makes you be like right go 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 make the piece <laughs> get it done um, which is often how it is uh, when you're doing a, a an actual uh, piece for a client, it's just like, I need this by the end of the week, go, go, go. Um, and so, yeah, learning, learning the speed is uh, important. And uh, learning, uh, learning to just be confident and be like, yeah, looks fine, go, put it to the presses, print it. <laughs> I might put some of that pink in here as well. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time, do I? Let's, let's take some of this down here. You have to sort of just get used to the idea that you might not always have time to do everything perfectly and uh, just to do the best you can with the amount of time you've got which is a good life lesson really I think just in general to uh, sort of you you can't do everything perfectly so you can't kind of just wait your whole life for like when things go the right way and you should just make the most of uh, the time that you actually do have. I think I'm going to use this orange more for like maybe some decals on the spacesuit because so there we go. Um, one of the interesting things about this uh, orange colour is that we can use it both as a kind of a, a lighter shade for this uh, pink, but the pink can also be shaded with the white for a different look, uh, and the orange can be used for these lights. Um, yeah, I think that's getting close to time actually. It's a shame we don't have a really good colour for shading that pink. Uh, that's that grey's too light. It just dulls it down. Uh, let's try and solve this issue. Let's see if we can use our darker colour for this purpose. Yes, we can. Okay, that looks better. It's one of the things like realistically you'd have like very strong highlights and shadows in space because the, there's no atmosphere so there's not a lot of ambient light bouncing around. Uh, but that doesn't always look good. <laughs> it, it can be quite tricky to work with when you uh, 
uh, trying to get like a skirt. Just be a bit more confident with those shadows and highlights, maybe. I'm quite interested to see how that new Star Wars comes out. Somebody at some point in the future is watching this video when the new Star Wars has come out and is either going, no, oh, it was terrible, or kind of, ah, yeah, it was decent. Ah. Or they're watching it way in the future and they're like, which new Star Wars? I don't know which one was the, the new Star Wars anymore and when this was recorded. <laughs> I remember when The Phantom Menace was the new Star Wars, so that came out when I was about like 14 or so. And, um, I was both excited and bemused by the fact that Queen Amidala was the same age as me. It's like, on the one hand it's like, oh cool, there's a character who's like a teenage girl like me, and on the other hand it's like, why the hell would you put a teenage girl like me in charge of a planet? <laughs> An entire planet. <laughs> I just, that's that's such a bizarre thing like Naboo's governmental system which involves having an elected queen it's like why why, what, <laughs> why why would you choose an elected queen who's a 14 year old girl habitually as your reigning what <laughs> I suppose it had to be that way it was the only way they could come up with having that character in the first thing as a person who was of a suitable age to be a love interest for Anakin later on <laughs> and not just have her suddenly turn up in like the second one but still have Anakin being found as a small child it's it's a very silly plot point and also legitimizing Leia as being a princess but she still could have just been an adopted princess, really. Like, and like, if your queen's a, if your queen is, a an elected official, then I'm pretty sure their daughter wouldn't be a princess anyway. And Padme wasn't a queen anymore when, when she had, Leia. So, I guess Leia is a. It's pretty like, surprising that she got like she was born from somebody who had been a queen in the past and happened to end up as a princess of a totally different planet and yeah I wonder if I does what Leia it's never mentioned if Leia had any siblings I guess if she did they got blown up when older and got blown up this is a sad like conversation I should stop anyway let's finish let's say let's just about, let's put a highlight on there. Do, 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 space lady. Alright, I'm gonna call that one finished. Um, so yeah, uh, no. No. clone stamp tool. No! You, come here. There we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess I could like just take that colour and let's just, just let's put some bit of dusting of like space dust in the background yeah that looks nice okay that's done all right uh so i hope you've enjoyed this uh chilled art and that and that you feel inspired to have a go yourself at doing some limited uh, palette paintings it's a really fun thing to do good way to get some practice in so uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel um, if you could maybe also give me a bit of money on patreon that would be awesome too help me kind of be supported making these videos uh, and uh, join me next time for a video about something else while chilling and doing art feel free to leave suggestions about that especially you guys who are backing this on patreon and i'll see you next time thanks for watching